If don't, the bristles don't, don't act like wheatgrass. <laughs> <laughs> if you're sleeping in your makeup. <gasps> no, don't even say that to me. How thick would that makeup have to be? Miss Delphire. Yeah. Prosthetics. Yeah. Prosthetic. Hey, no. Yeah. <laughs> Do you remember the people at Sephora that were like, oh, do my makeup so I can wear it tomorrow? Kevin, 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 Kevin. Thank you. Thank you. Oh my God. I love you so much. Uh, you know what you sound like? Who? You sound, when you do that, you sound like, oh my God, what's that Nick Kroll show? The Nick Kroll show? Yeah. No, 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 oh, no. Oh, <laughs> Big Mouth. Big Mouth. Uh, the blonde. Lola. Lola, you sound Lola like... Lola Scumpy. Oh, gosh, guys. Oh, my God. I yeah, love her. That's that's who you sound like when yeah. you do that voice. That's your Lola to me. 100%. Yeah. I love Lola. That's oh my, my favorite, God. She's my favorite character. That show is Trumpy fun. for Scumpy. Trumpy for Scump. <laughs> Welcome to Benvenue. Welcome. Do you know what that's from? Cabaret. You're not a theater queen. No. I saw Sweeney Todd on Broadway. Have you How ever seen it? Sweeney Todd the movie? No. Sweeney Todd is Stephen Sondheim's masterpiece, and it, the Broadway show was unbelievable. Just Wasn't that about the like the the barber. the barber? Yeah, who like kills people. Yeah. Unbelievable. It's one of Johnny the, Depp? That he was in the movie. Yeah. yeah. He should have won the Oscar for that movie. Controversial, maybe. Hmm. But uh okay. Anywho's hi guys. Hi. Welcome back to a new episode of Beautiful or Bothered. This is Beautiful sh- or Bothered? Did I say that? Yes. Maybe I'm in a good mood. Maybe I'm beautiful or, or bothered. bothered. Yeah. <laughs> Which one are you? Oh, no, because I think I named the podcast Beautiful and Bothered because beautiful was supposed to be like appearance. So, And I'm bothered on the inside. Yeah, so I guess bothered I'm on the bothered, inside, beautiful on the but outside. But I look shitty today. Welcome back to Ugly or Bothered <laughs> and Bothered. God, I don't Ugly know. Ugly and Bothered. Welcome back to Beautiful and Bothered. Uh, on today's <laughs> episode, we are talking about 10... Makeup Mythbusters. There, we have a list of 10 kind of makeup misconceptions, mm. and we're busting them. Oh, 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 oh I'm not my ready. God. Oh. Oh, buy me a drink. Oh. We're busting the door down and letting you know what's BS, what is just ridiculous about these misconceptions. Yes. Oh and a lot of these misconceptions are uh, the fault of the beauty industry and uh, bad influencers and Mm -hmm. beauty brands who want to make money yeah a lot of misinformation out there so we're gonna debunk it for you ladies and gents so let's get to it let's dive in Alrighty, guys number one myth that we are busting and this is a big one Mm -hmm. setting spray is not setting powder when we worked at sephora and you like asked that let's say someone had a foundation or a concealer etc you would then be like oh like you know do you have a, a setting powder like if they needed anything else and they'd be like oh i have a setting spray and i'm like no not, mama not one in the same girl not one in the same so what's your take on this so this actually gets like under my skin too mm. in the sense of like people always saying too, depending on age whatever they were like oh powder i can't use powder i'm i'm 40 i yes. can't use powder and i'm like well that's not true that's not yes. true ellen that's not true ellen you were invited you were invited <laughs> which we also want to uh preface before we start this episode especially because like i know a lot of beginners might watch us etc people all of all ages and we're we want to debunk these myths to help you guys with your makeup routine and all of our Mm. animosity disclaimer before we start is at the makeup industry wrongly marketing and like just falsely claiming things this and that that they have just confused the shit out of people because that is what we always encountered because you all watching this if you have these concerns that if you are over 40 if you're over 50 and that you can't use powder that's not true. Exactly. It's about this, what powder you're using. Exactly. And, because yeah. these makeup companies, to sell their product to you, yeah. they make you think you can't use this because you're of a certain age or you have this texture skin or you can't do this or that. Mm-hmm. They're trying to sell their own product. They have their own agenda for you 100%. to buy these other products to replace what you they are making you think you cannot use. Without a doubt. So, yes. And they're try- then someone will launch a setting spray and they'll be like, it does it all. It's everything. She's the mother I never it's the, had. It's the, rep- the sister everybody wants. <laughs> yeah. It's too much. So I would say my yes. my kind of uh, to debunk the myth is yeah. the way I've always thought of it is setting powder sets liquid. Yeah. Setting spray sets powder. 
And here's the thing. So think of it in the step of layers. You have your liquids, your foundations, your concealer. Let's say you mm-hmm. use any cream, bronzer, and blush. What is really going to keep that from moving, enhance the long wear, keep it from separating, keep your oil at bay, keep the oil from breaking up the right. liquid. Because another thing, nine times out of 10 too, is like even family and friends, or when we worked at Sephora, people would always say like, oh, my foundation doesn't last. It's off throughout the day or it's broken up. Nine times out of 10, I'd say, are you using a setting powder? And they said no, because that is what would break it up. So that that mm-hmm. powder, not only is it going to set it, which yes, it, it can set something the same way a setting spray spray can, but a setting spray is not going to smooth the texture of your skin. It's not really going to keep oil at bay or from coming through the makeup as much as setting spray. It's not Mm going to keep it from breaking up. Like you've seen everybody do the swatch eyeshadow spray setting spray on top and then it doesn't move because that's a powder. It's a powder. Exactly. So a setting powder is what's going to keep the liquid in place. And then I think of a setting spray as keeping the powder from moving. It's like that that third layer of insurance and it also makes the powders melt into the skin. It just keep it makes everything look more hydrated mm. and melted in. And I I've shown that to people too in store where I've done that wear test of powder and like setting spray one and then do another swatch of powder and then rub the arm and it doesn't move. But yeah, you think about that. If a cream or liquid is not drying down or if it's not being set with something It's going to be moving. So what, like, you can't put another liquid on top of it and expect to do, like... Exactly. And I always tell people, I don't know how you feel about this, but I always get this question a lot, between doing liquids and then when they say, oh, I'm going to use a setting powder, and then do I do cream blush? Mm. I always tell people liquids go with liquids and liquids and creams. Do all of that first, then set and reinforce with Mm. powder bronzer, powder blush, if you want to reinforce that color. Yes. So I would say I always do, obviously, foundation, concealer, but and then I do Mm. cream bronzer or contour before powder. But the only cream I will use after powder sometimes is a cream or liquid blush or highlighter. And if it, and that depends on the formula, the better the formula, if it can go over powder, that's a Mac daddy to me that it's like really great. Cause for me, sometimes my thing is, I guess when it comes to cream blush, I like to end with blush in a way. Like I, I, I don't trust using cream blush and then powdering because I, then if I didn't reinforce with powder blush, If I did it in that order, I just feel like my blush would be gone. If I use cream blush, I still do it after powder. But maybe that's a fear. I don't know. Maybe that's like just me being stuck in my ways. I'm more fearful of using a cream or liquid after I've already powdered. Yeah. But then again, I've had formulas where it doesn't separate. So again, it depends on formulation, but going... And that also reiterates the point of whatever setting powder you're using, it depends on what powder you're using for your skin. Very much. And there's a difference between finishing powders and setting <gasps> powders. Okay. So well, don't get that twisted either. Yes, we were. I mean, that wasn't one of our myth busters, but that's a great point. So a uh, setting powder is doing yeah. what we're saying. Definitely. And the cream, setting. the contour and blush, yeah. the cream liquid conversation, that can be after that's preference. The reason that is, is a lot of those formulas do dry down from a cream to powder. So it doesn't need to be set because it's a completely different formula mm-hmm. than foundation and concealer is just liquid. Yeah. So a setting powder is really going to keep the liquids in place, but a finishing powder, almost like uh, the hourglass powders, the ambient lighting powders, those are a finishing powder. So that is almost, uh, it's just adding a veil on top of the skin, yes. like a little bit of like to catch the light or to make everything look more hydrated again. Sometimes when I did bridal makeup and I finished people with the ambient lighting powder, like if I didn't do setting spray, I was like this. I know it was fine because of the setting powder and finishing powder. I'm very particular now. Mm-hmm. Now at, at this point in time, like especially when I do bridal or like whenever I do makeup in general for people, I'm very particular about what setting sprays go on my clients. I'm very, very much. like the elf. The yes. Charlotte Tilbury. Yes. Love those. That Charlotte one, I swear, I just absolutely love. And the one size, the matte one. I know. So I know. Good. Which mm. if you guys had any point during this, just for time's sake, uh, we're not going to like do recommendations because we yeah. have a lot to get through. But I will link in the description below. We have... Uh, the, All of our top rated. We have a yeah. whole drugstore top rated, the best yeah. of the best. So you can go and check that out. But okay, yeah. So setting spray is not setting powder. Big difference. Yes. Okay. Uh, number dose. So we have makeup and then SPF and linking those two. So there's two things for me. So it's the SPF in the makeup. Yes. And 
not using SPF because you're wearing makeup. Uh, First of all, if you didn't need to put SPF on because you were wearing makeup, how thick would that makeup have to be? Like it'd have to be. It like would a have to be the Miss Delphire. Yeah, prosthetics. Yeah, <laughs> prosthetic. yeah. yeah, literally. Like, <laughs> yeah. Oh my totally. god! Just full face of buttercream. One hundred percent. Get out of here. I love that movie. Oh my god! I still what watch all the time. God, it makes me laugh out loud. Movie. I can't talk about Robin that Williams. And, or I'm gonna um, cry. Um, Birdcage. Oh, iconic. Oh, my God. Iconic. I haven't watched that in years. I need to go back and watch that again. This set is kind of reminding me of Birdcage. It's yep. giving Miami. Right? Yeah, yeah. Totally Miami, right, Birdcage. Yeah. Miami. What's that from? Golden Girls. Oh, they sung Miami? Yeah, they made the whole song about Miami. I don't remember that episode. We'll watch it. Okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, the makeup and SPF thing really you fits on. You have to under- wear SPF no matter what. Okay. okay. Also, too, I think it's Boo Boo the Fool having SPF and makeup. I agree. Haven't they already debunked that the amount of SPF that you need to use is a tablespoon? Which- Something like that. Let, let's put it this way, because we talked about this in another episode. Yeah. And of course, someone was in the comments reading us that like the amount we said was wrong. But let me put it this way. Whatever the amount of SPF you're supposed to wear, no human being would ever wear that much foundation. You would look insane. Because you're doing, let's say, one to two pumps of foundation. Yes. The amount of SPF you need is probably three times that. 100%. You need to do a separate layer of... You're not getting that SPF coverage. They even say SPF in moisturizer is not enough. Agreed. So, no. Separate SPF. Yes. There are so many... Look it up. There are I know. a plethora of options for and, you to use. And on top of it, my, my qualm is that SPF in makeup doesn't do anything for the formula it doesn't it, they i feel yeah. like nowadays they've got it to a point where it doesn't necessarily hinder the formula hinder but it's not helping so just no. t- it would be even better if they took it, take out. it out and i'll start with an spf and then leave it at that and people worry about flashback with their spf and everything and everything yeah. like that but i feel like when you're putting makeup on and if you're using i mean spfs have come such a long way mm-hmm. you can get an spf that's not going to give you flashback or any of that so no, I've no, always no. found too. I can't tell you how many people used to tell me throughout the day, like in bridal makeup, how how this thing or this thing or this thing gave them flashback. To me, if your SPF gives you flashback when you're wearing it alone, by the time you have your foundation on top, then your powder, then all the other products, I don't get flashback. You know what I mean? You're I, I, putting a whole yeah. thing on top. Right. Maybe if you're wearing just like a tinted moisturizer and a yeah. light thing on top of that SPF, Maybe. you might want to make sure it doesn't have flashback. But if you're doing full makeup or whatever, it's not going to be that big of a deal. No. Oh, that people always say too that, oh, I don't want an extra step in my routine and I don't want to have to do SPF. But like- Okay, girl. Well, then- Well, yeah. it's not any different of you- you doing serum, moisturizer, eye cream, and then one more layer, and you're putting 40 steps of makeup on, so just put the SPF in there, girl. I know. If anything, I would swap. If you want to eliminate something from your routine, yeah. put the SPF in place of your primer. And there's so many different ways, too, to get SPF throughout the day. Now with all the spray versions, the e.l.f., whatever yes. the case. Yes. It's so easy to reapply, so no I excuse, because you have to reapply every two hours is I know. Like the thing. Which yes. Insane. Just, I mean, it's horrible. But now with all the, the options, sprays, come yeah. on. I know, I know. So, so easy. yeah, your the SPF in your makeup is not enough. So I would just swap so that enough. out and use a real SPF. Separate SPF. Yep, yep, yep. Come on now. Number three is makeup causes acne, meaning that just makeup itself Wearing it. exactly is Got causing it. acne. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. This was you. You can take this one away. So, and I mean, this always frustrated me because I as well when I first started wearing makeup and I. Like I was wearing, you know, a full face every day. And then thinking about what I was doing, I was like, oh God, I would take off my makeup after a day. And by the time I woke up the next day, I would have breakouts all over. And I was like, what is going on? How was I taking it off? Makeup Makeup wipes. (laughs) Yeah. Isn't it funny that in our youth, I feel like people often discover makeup years before skincare. And I think that's a teenage thing. You know what I mean? It's easier to just, you obviously play with makeup, but you're so young, you don't think you even need to dip your toe into the skincare world. But it's like, no girl, it ne- we need to kind of as a society make it hand in hand. I was literally the only piece of skincare I was ever using throughout the years. Are you ready for this? Yeah. Drum roll. Seabreeze astringent. Oh! Girl, Seabreeze. Does anybody anybody else in the comments sound off? If you ever use Seabreeze, I don't know what that is. I was squeaky clean, girl. (sighs) That you were fucking dehydrate, just sucking any ounce of moisture out of your face. Because I was oily, I was like, I need to get this oil off. And when I was like, I I was like, yeah, I feel great. And I would use that to take off my makeup. Oh, geez, Alou. Yes, when I, I, so I didn't get 
acne as a teenager, really. Oh, I okay. broke out Lucky really you. bad. Well, no, then I got it later, like when I was maybe 20, 21. Like I got really bad all here, which was weird that it was like later. Hmm. But same, I oh, my mom worked for Clinique, so all I used was the Clinique astringent. And that was it. And all it was Those doing. Jagunda bottles of the horrible. astringent. Oh, I'm rubbing off on you. Yeah. yeah. It was literally, yeah, just the, the drying one, two, three, out four, my skin. And it smells like nail polish remover. Literally. Oh yes. Oh my God. Wait, did you ever have it? Like when you would open that up, it would like burn my eyes. Yes. Oh my God. It was yes. horrible. It was like acetone. Yeah. And I would, yeah, <laughs> Accutane. Like, and I would, yeah, just use that. And it was just like drying my, like, and my acne wasn't going, yeah, going yeah, away. Yeah. And the minute I switched, I think my mom got me from Lord and Taylor. It was like, like um, the brand Ahaba, it was a, a yeah. like a lotion looking consistency. It was uh, the Ahaba toner. And I started using that on top. Like okay. in, after I washed my face, then I would use that. I'm not kidding you. My acne went away in three months. I went, yeah. When I started using skincare. Because it was a gentle toner. Yeah. yeah. I started using it as, as more so skincare Which when I started at the Sephora. Which for acne. Yeah. yeah. And when I started just hydrating my skin, I said at one point I was like enough salicylic. Taking off my makeup, I was using cleansing bombs and all of that to remove makeup. Hence, you yeah. know, this point of it causing acne. Started cleansing my makeup, taking a cleansing bomb first. Yeah. And then a cleanser. Yeah. And then just hydrating my skin and my skin cleared up faster than ever. And I was like, oh, the yeah. makeup isn't causing the breakouts. It's how you take it off, girl. Yes. Yeah, so if you're just makeup wiping your face and going to bed. If you're sleeping in your makeup. <gasps> no, don't even say that to me. I I will never. find you and take cleansing balm and smush it all over you. Just for my, I don't that understand how people. so. My pillow. Do you remember the people at Sephora that were like, oh, do my makeup so I can wear it tomorrow? Kevin, 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 Kevin. I forgot about that. How many people ask how long will this last? <gasps> oh, I blocked that out. I blocked that out. I am disgusted. Yes. With people have the thought. Oh my God. There was somebody recently that had said that to me. They were like, well, how long can you wear like makeup for? And I said, the day. The day and when the sun like, sets. Yeah. <laughs> and that was the night the lights went, went out, out in, in Georgia. Georgia. <laughs> Wash her off. No, yes. I want to take a hose Girl. hooked up to Clinique, take the day off. And Tell me like, about it. Whoop. Well, people don't even want to hear that. I mean, because not only should you be washing your face, if you have make full face of makeup on, you better double cleanse that. Dub, I'm talking cleansing balm and, and a then cleansing a face oil wash. and a face yeah. wash. I will. Sometimes I do a triple cleanse. Oh, I'll yeah, do yeah, a yeah. cleansing bomb and get an oil in there and then a foaming cleanser. Yeah. Oh, girl, get it off. My best way to know, too, is say even sometimes if I just double cleanse, like I'll use a cleansing bomb and then I'll use a face, wa- face and- wash. I will then I use my toner on a cotton pad. And that's how I know if the cotton pad is clear. That's how I know I got everything. 100 percent. And I even showed this to my mom recently. I showed her she did a cleansing bomb and then a wipe to get that off. Mm-hmm. Cleansed her face fully. Yeah. Then I gave her a micellar, um, the Drunk Elephant micellar milk, and I said, go all over. Her face was still pulling I know. makeup off of I it know, after I know. double cleansing. So Because there's been so many times that I just use the face wash and, ew, I hate the way I say wash. Um, wash. That's by far my you worst. You want to wash your clothes? New York thing. Um, and then I use a toner, and the toner still has like still has foundation on it. And that's when you know, too, don't even go in with a second round. You better go in with something stronger to get that makeup off. Get totally. it off of your skin. You're going to break out. I know. And I'm oh, sleeping in your makeup and then thinking it's going to look good the next day. And then you're packing more makeup on top of it to touch it oh up. Oh, my God. You're you're asking Mortician. for trouble. That reminds yeah. me of just that. Like, it's just, I can't even, like, I feel like you yeah. could, like, peel it off. At the end of the day. You probably can. Yeah, girl. All right, what's next? (laughs) Full coverage glam is more difficult than natural glam. All right. So this one is was fascinating to me in a way because when I were we I was at Sephora with you, Kardashian era, everybody wanted full coverage. And uh even me, I started to get the inkling, like doing my own makeup because I wanted it to be super undetectable, like guy makeup. I was like what like I couldn't get it like I just couldn't get it to maybe not have texture or whatever the case was and um I realized I was like oh well, I was like because you know full coverage glam most people they're in the mindset where they're fine seeing makeup the the, the client or you if you're doing full beat like not to say it should look makeupy but I mean like you're you're in the mindset that you're okay with you or other people saying, oh, she has makeup on. It still looks beautiful, but Uh oh, she has makeup on. But when you want undetectable, like natural, you but better situation, girl, call Michelangelo. 
it is hard because there's so much more that goes into the skin prep, which we'll get to the skin prep, the way the skin looks, the products you're using, the way you're building them, the way you're doing everything. So that's the thing. It's like, don't compare. If you're somebody that just wants natural makeup, like don't look at these celebrities and everything else and be like, Oh my God, why don't I look like that? Because first of all, in person, it's, it's in person. They look, looks like drag Queens. Yes. It's, it's very makeupy. It is very makeupy. And it's funny too, because you're going to spend the, probably the same amount of time on full glam versus natural glam. Yes. Yes. Pretty much the same. And those people that want that like five minute makeup because they're a busy mom, I'm like, it's not. Exactly. It's not easy. Like well, you're, you're going to you're have not, to make sacrifices. You yeah. know what I mean? There's certain things you're not going to be able right. to do, but I agree it, with it's, you because it's not easy. That was always the thing in bridal was people would be shocked at how long, cause I was somebody I'm not, I hate rushing. Like I would always want to schedule at least an hour per person, even if I was doing that supernatural thing. Mm. And people would always look at like all the makeup I had out. And it, I always used to say the joke to people. I'm like, isn't it insane how much makeup it takes to look like you're wearing nothing? Because it was, there was so much more true. finesse in the process. It was more technical than anything else to get it right with tips and tricks. Because if one thing is off in that makeup, if one thing is too bold, if the eye is too saturated, if the yes. brow is too carved, something is going to look too overdone for the natural glam. Yes. And then you're like going over to like almost yes. reassess and be like, okay, now I have to balance out the cheek. And then you're putting more yes. makeup on and you're like, well, now this like natural glam is now a little more saturated. Yeah. Because think about it this way. Right. It's almost the equivalent of like, let's say your car gets like dinged and the paint chips off. What's going to be easier? Touching up that paint chip and matching it perfectly and making it undetectable or just repainting the car? Repainting right. the car will take two seconds and right. it'll be all one thing. But getting that match right and still matching the aesthetic of the things you're leaving come through or leaving that yes, are already there, exactly. but matching it perfectly and get enhancing it is such a yeah. more difficult thing. Oh, a hundred percent. And yeah, it is unbelievable. Cause now even thinking how many times do we hear like, Oh, I can't get it down. I'm trying to just look for a natural makeup look for every day. But they're like, I want it to even out my skin, but I don't want it to look like makeup. And it's that weird, yes. it's that balance of finding what is going to work for you. And there is no one product that will work for everybody. No. You have to dive deep and it's hard to find what works for you, but it's all about trying and error. Totally, totally. What formula will work for you? Yeah. So. Yeah. And that's the thing. I mean, that's how we learned. Like I would always tell people, I'm like, listen, on a day off, like enjoy yourself, have fun with it. Like pour wine, do your makeup for no reason. Have and, fun with and it. Stop learn, making it a job. And realize what, yeah. okay, at certain steps of the process, what don't I like? Like if I liked it up to this step and then I just added something and now it changed, Maybe that's the product you need to switch. Maybe the powder's too heavy. Maybe it's not finely milled enough. Maybe the bronzer's color is too orange or too... Those are the things you kind of have to dissect and pay attention as you're doing it. And if you're in between two things, do a split face. (gasps) Totally, totally. Do one half, one on the other. And if you're wearing it out, who cares? Go to the grocery store, wear it out, see how it wears on you Wear two different formulas on two different sides. And then no one will know. I told people to do that all the time. I'm like, who's going to clock you in shop right? No one. Exactly, exactly. No one's worried about it. So I would do that all the time time i would go to work with two different foundations on yes and it, nobody said anything to me. yes totally I was testing it out to see yeah. what would look better on me it really is just trial and error yeah so the next one is mature skin can't wear shimmer poor women with mature skin let me tell you girl i feel like they are fed so much bullshit it's that not even funny like they can and you can't do, do this so. you can't do this because and it's, it's a lot of stop doing bullshit. it it is it's because the fear mongering of you're gonna look older which is so sexist and shitty to me yeah that's exactly all it is. because you're gonna tell women over and i saw the article over the age of 40 that you shouldn't be doing these 10 things i know it said stop wearing saturated lip colors stop <gasps> doing this stop wearing blush i was like yeah yeah ridiculous so no shimmer hardly any blush barely any lips so yeah. you want people to look dead well, yeah yeah <laughs> just they want them, like but more. then you're gonna make people yeah. feel awful about themselves to then drive them to what like you're driving them to go get plastic surgery and exactly. look for makeup that's marketed towards mature women yeah. I, this is awful like i know you can wear shimmer it's all totally. about the for, again formulation it yes. goes back to that setting powder conversation of finding the right shimmer especially for the eyes and the cheek you can wear yes. shimmer 
It's and all that's about the what formula. Yes, is is a heavy, thick setting powder like Laura Mercier or One Size going to make you look horrible? Yes. Is a finely milled powder like the NYX HD or uh, we used to talk about the Laura Mercier Secret Brightening Powder, rest in peace, but a very finely milled powder. They stop making that? I think so, yeah. That's a gross. very finely milled powder or a finishing powder like the Ambient Lighting Hourglass, is that going to make you look stunning? Absolutely. So that's the difference. But I always... With, when it comes to shimmer, I would do so many Mother of the Brides and I would put shimmer and they would ask me that. And again, exactly. It's all about that formulation. And I would always tell them, I'm like, if you're doing a chalky shimmer, that ain't going to do anything. But a, For a anybody. Very be- exactly. Yeah. But a very beautiful, almost like wet looking shimmer just padded in, in my opinion, like diffuses the light and actually makes things look more youthful than anything else. I just don't... Yeah. How many times did we do all matte eyes <gasps> on somebody that was more mature? I just think it looks dead. And they always wanted to. They were like, I feel like I should wear purples and plums. And I was like, this is going to make your eyes look so sunken in. Say it. Say it. And just... So many mature skin like, women would it, always want like, cool tones. And I'm and saying... It was like, you look like you're dead. about you're, you're dead. Cigarette like, ash. That's yes, what I was always yes, say because yes. that's a thing too. Oh. Yes, I would always lean a little bit more warm or pink because those like cool tone uh, neutrals or like grays and 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 purples, etc. You have to realize like when you're contouring, you're contouring with cool tone colors because cool so tone it looks, it looks more recedes. sunken in. So when you're using cool tone shadows, it's making it look more sunken in. You're yes. adding a shadow. You're not adding anything Life to enhance and depth and Life. in the right in the right way too you remember i mean we used to use that tart palette that purple remember that all matte one the original in bloom right no the original oh one. you're that, right like, you're purples, right the purple. grays and the, it was all cool tone and they always wanted those colors and i was like I know. this really isn't in my professional opinion this isn't gonna look good i know they wanted it and they're like you're right and i'm like well now we don't have time to fix it but then what i would always tell people to do a little quick tip anybody that wants to look alive little blush and bronzer in the crease Mm-hmm. That makes the world of a difference, especially yes. someone more mature. If you want to bring out your eyes more, take the same blush that you're using, powder, go for it. Yes. And then put your bronzer almost right in there to like deepen it a little bit, but it's not going to recede. It's going to just warm up the eye. Yes. Play with that. That is going to do you wonders. And another little bonus tip, which I feel like this is, uh, or a bonus myth buster is, um, I feel like this is a lie. People have been told women with mature skin forever. As you age, packing on eyeliner is not the gig. Because listen, I can't tell you how many women in my life, my mom, my aunts, aunts and laws, et cetera, take that eyeliner pencil and just put it on like they're getting paid by the swipe. And I tell people all the time, the darker you're making your under eye, Again, the contour Holes. situation, you are dragging your eyes down. You are literally creating a shadow. The brighter and lighter the under eye is, the more lifted it's going to appear. That's not to say you can't put anything underneath the eye, but if you're doing eyeliner, do it on the waterline. But if you want it on the lash line, use an eyeshadow with an angled, a thin angled brush because that's the thing too a cream or a gel eyeliner pencil underneath the eye on mature Clunky, skin chunky honey and it's gonna it's gonna like smear throughout the day yes. because the the skin is more mobile and the cream or the or, or the gel it's gonna move where a powder is not gonna budge if you're putting it on in that way and, and if you blending do a setting out. spray over the powder eyeshadow that'll lock it in yes. under the eye too so everything will stay and it's gonna stay put and clean and crisp yeah and your eyes are gonna be the Creamy, crispy cracker. <laughs> <laughs> Creamy, crispy cracker. Even on top of it, I would yeah. say, too, another trick I always did with women with mature skin was when I did liner on the top, I would only do it on the outside half. Oh, I would tight yeah. line. I would tight line on the inside. I would always, honestly, I would tight line because that's the thing, too, with mature skin. As we age, you the tight line area, which is the skin underneath the lash, as the eye goes down, the it naturally, this lifts a little bit so you can see the tight line area on mature skin Hmm. more. Now that I said it, you're going to notice it. As people age, you can see that tight line skin more visibly because it almost lifts in a way because the skin coming down causes that to come out. So you can always see the tight line. So 
tight lining on mature skin is going to make that lash line look thicker and it's going to give you the definition on the inside corner but then when I did liner on the lid I would only do it on the outside half because that's lifting the eye when you bring the liner all the way in you're losing all that lift you're now just make you're bringing the inside of the eye down as well wow yeah it, gonna, it's now now I'm gonna like look at totally. everybody and just be like one hundred percent. Yeah, that's our little mature skin MythBuster section. Yes. There's so many things oh, for it. We could go on. Uh, for we days. could do a whole episode of mature skin, which people ask us all the time. I, know. I would love to do that. We're, we'll do that for you. Okay, what's next? Um, so we have the skin prep is different from skincare. So, oh my God, girl, this is one of the most important. In this, it's such a weird thing too because people say there's a big myth behind you don't need to do skincare if you're prepping your skin with a primer. Like you don't need a moisturizer. Which I would not even put primer in like the prep category. It's uh, it's a makeup it's product. It's a makeup product. Yeah. That always bugged me too when people would always say, I said, what are you prepping your skin with? They're like a primer. I said, what what moisturizer? They're like, oh, I don't know. Sometimes I just don't if I'm doing primer. Well, no, no that that is a makeup step. That's not. Totally. You're, you using Benefit Professional is not a moisturizer. So let's backtrack now. 100%. So when we talk about skin prep and skin care, what that really means too is that skin prep is not just day of. It's not the night before. Yes. Your skin prep for makeup, if you're especially if you're doing if you're wearing makeup throughout the week, your skin prep starts weeks, months, whenever you're yes. doing it. So it's really whenever you're exfoliating. Like when you exfoliate, you're doing it so your skin looks better with makeup too. So yes. you're keeping that in mind of what you're using, what you're doing. And you're prepping sometimes the week before. That's why yeah. I tell brides, start doing skincare like months before. Yes. Get well, into those routines. I break it up in the sense that your skincare, your your face wash, your cleansers, mm -hmm. uh, serum, moisturizer, eye cream, toner, et cetera, that's long-term skin prep. That is the long-term health of the mm -hmm. skin. Your exfoliators obviously have, but we're talking in a makeup standpoint, exfoliation obviously has long-term benefits, huge long-term benefits, especially when it comes to anti-aging, et cetera. But yeah. that in the, in the makeup conversation, that's your short term. That's what's going to make the makeup look like silk. And I don't know why I keep using construction analogies, but again, well, Bob, the builder over think, here, I know, think of it in the sense that, yeah, again, if you're repainting a wall a, a, a wall, that's, you know, been that way for a while and there's, there's, uh, grooves and nicks and whatever the case is, is, putting a coat of primer on the wall before the paint going to hide the nicks and bumps and whatever. No girl, you're still going to see them. You're going to see those nicks and bumps. Yeah, you got to sand it down, girl, fill it in, sand it down. And yeah. that is skin prep. That is your yeah. chemical exfoliation, your physical exfoliating the polishes, because I would ask brides all the time. I'd be doing their trial. And I was like, fuck me because as I was doing it I could tell there was just layers upon layers upon layers of dead skin that mm -hmm. was showing the foundation's gonna show it girl yeah it's like putting makeup on sandpaper there's only so many miracles we can perform and I would ask them what do you do for your like skin and they would always they would always say like oh I moisturize they would have a whole skincare routine but if you're putting skincare on top of dead skin that needs it's to not be gonna exfoliated penetrate. away. It's not, and it's not even going to penetrate and do what it's supposed to do. This was a big eye-opening experience for me. One, uh, I was learning from a brand one day and they were showing me like exfoliation techniques and they were like, oh, did your skin ever look very dewy after skincare? I was like, of course it does. And they were like, well, technically it like shouldn't look as wet as it does sometimes because if you're not exfoliating, the skincare will sit on top and you're <gasps> going to look so wet and shiny. But if you look wet and shiny, like to the max, either you're putting too much skincare on or you're not exfoliating enough. Gag. Yeah. I never knew that. Yeah. So like when you look like a glazed glossy, donut, yeah, like a glazed yeah, yeah. donut. For real. Like your if you're whole. using... Yeah. <laughs> I had to. <laughs> oh, my God. I never thought of that because yeah. there's a barrier on top of the there skin. There is fully... And when you're doing your skincare in the wrong order, I mean, this is like a whole separate conversation. Oh, God, But yeah. if you're doing things out of order, too much of it, not exfoliating enough, not exfoliating... You're having a stroke. Not exfoliating enough. enough. And you're doing the wrong skincare in the wrong steps too. Yeah. And formulation wise, if you're not doing what's right for your skin specifically, it's going to throw off your entire, entire routine where yeah. oils, 
if you use them for some oils, aren't going to let things penetrate through it. So then you're going to look extra glazed. Yes. It's going to ruin everything. And you're you're doing all this skincare every night, basically for no reason. You're spending thousands upon thousands of dollars mm-hmm. on skincare and you're wasting your time if you're not exfoliating properly and if you're using the wrong things in the wrong order. And going to bed with your makeup on. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And you're like, oh, let me put a moisturizer over this makeup. Ooh. Oh my God, don't even. Next myth, and I'm very passionate about this, is airbrush makeup is the best makeup or the makeup you need on your wedding day. Girl, I could talk about this forever. And this is a preference because I know there's going to be people saying I wear airbrush makeup or I wore airbrush makeup on my wedding and it looked amazing. Okay, listen, I do not like airbrush makeup because... There is naturally a completely different formulation of airbrush makeup because it needs to be able to go through a gun without clogging. A lot of the time, that's oils and just things that, again, are not enhancing the formula. So when I do airbrush makeup on people, first of all, it is literally accentuating every little baby hair, like phallus hair. Like if they have little like phallus hair is called like the almost invisible Peach peach fuzz. Yeah. Every, every yeah. one, it looks like you just did baby powder on them. Not only that, but because of that oily consistency, you look like I sprayed your face with cooking spray two hours later. And I, b- brides would always want airbrush makeup. And I would so, be- I'd be like, listen, there's so many foundations out there nowadays that I can cocktail something perfect for you. And that's the thing about airbrush makeup. What world are we living in that people think that airbrush makeup is one size fits all? That that's going to work for every skin type. You out of your mind because it's just one formulation. No, get out of here. I hate it. Well, that's the episode. Of <laughs> yeah, yeah. No. Um, no, just kidding. Stay. Don't go anywhere. Yeah. Um, airbrush. Uh, yeah. No, I've done it before, and there was actually a time where I panicked years ago. I was doing airbrush on somebody, and it was like it was day of a wedding. It was like mm-hmm. one of the bridesmaids, and everybody was doing airbrush. And I remember I panicked because a I could tell she didn't exfoliate, and mm. I go to do this, and it was I don't know if it was the primer I put on or what the case was, but then it started to look textured. So then I went in with a brush to go like see if I could like press it in more. Yeah, started to lift it off of the no, skin. No, and I sat there and I was like. I, I could feel like my heart beating and like I felt like I was starting to sweat and I was like, oh my God, I want this yeah. to be over. I want this to be done. I literally had to like, I know I was buffing it in and it was just taking it off. I'm not joking. It was I my know. nightmare. I know. So then I was like, oh, I'm just going to go in and like even it out with like a little bit of foundation. And when I started to put it on, you saw where the airbrush didn't come off. <gasps> it was like patchy and like it was no coverage here and then full blown coverage here. I was like, isn't that the <laughs> worst? <laughs> when you're, yeah, yeah, yeah. When you're doing a makeover on somebody and this has happened to me rarely, but you're doing a make and nine times out of 10, exactly. It comes down to like some chemical reaction. Yes. And I don't mean like allergy. I mean like the f- way the formulas are working together or whatever the case oh, is. Oh my God. Where the boat is going down. Like it is, oh. and you can't get, yeah. And you, oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, rest in peace. Um, <laughs> where you can't, where it is just like the devil has come to Georgia, like, and you can't fix it. Yes. And no matter what you do, it's just making it worse. And it's just one oh. thing. And that panic of what am I going to do? Especially doing yes. it where it's like timed or you only have a certain amount of time <gasps> because it's the way someone looks. You know what I mean? And it's going to be photographed. Yes. And eternalized it's forever. Not like, it's not like a plumber. An eternal photograph toilet. is going to be taken and you're just like, Yes. It's not like a plumber fixing someone's toilet where they're like, oh, I don't have the part. Like, I, I'll whatever. Be back. I'll be back tomorrow. I'll be back in a week. There is no tomorrow. No, yeah, it yeah. is. I have 15 minutes left for this person. There's a timeline. Yes. And yes. that is the most, I could go on. This could be a whole separate thing <sighs> too. Make up nightmares. Yes. And, but this is the thing too, though. Like if you, again, skin prep, what I was putting on, this isn't going to, this is, uh, like you said, it's not a one size fits all. I know. I know. It, it, it's not. So I don't know where, and there was a thing years ago, Makeup Forever used to sell it. I think it was something that it was like, um, like a diluter for airbrushing that you could use a formulation and then dilute it with the airbrush. I was always nervous about that though. Cause I was like, Oh, is this going to work if I take like maybe Makeup Forever foundations which yeah. as airbrush, that's incredible. But like, I can't take any formula and do that. Cause some of I these know. aren't formulated to like, imagine a cat. You can't do that with Kat Von D. Exactly. Paint. But that, that right there proves the point. What are you adding to it to make it, Diluting. be able to go through the gun i don't want whatever that is the formula is how it's supposed to be and there's yeah. so many beautiful foundation formulas i would tell people all right, the time right. and it's not about light coverage or whatever the case is because again you I, look can airbrushed, I can make you look airbrushed 
One hundred percent. Yeah. Yes. And when I was forced to on some people because they like wouldn't budge, it almost like it sucked because like as I was doing their makeup, I was like, I you could look so much better right now. But I was I like, know. you were stuck in your ways, and I'm like, okay, here you go. Like, I know it makes I know. me feel, and I almost because then it's too your work is attached to it. So now I feel bad. I know that I'm like, oh god, like what does your makeup look like right now? Like I can't even imagine. I know. I what know their makeup look like at the end of the night. And when it when it looks like shit, they're gonna blame you. Yeah. Even though they d- refuse to, you know what I mean, go yep. with your recommendation. I know. So again, and it all depends on the artist, but. Airbrush I foundation mean, for me? No. It's a it's a pass. It's a pass. All right, so next up we have your favorite topic. This infuriates me. I and know it's it cuz of beauty brands. Bronzer versus contour. I am so tired of these makeup brands selling bronzers, warm tone bronzers and calling them contours. Enough is enough. The you know what I've had? The L'Oreal article. It's. Enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes. Stop making warm tone products and calling them contour ones because they're not contours. Contour, first of all, <laughs> let's go back to Kevin Kwan. Contour, and not that he invented it, but con- he put it on paper. Contour was a technique. It was not a product. To contour meant using a cool tone product to sculpt the skin. Then makeup brands were like, ooh, we could make money off this. Don't know what it is because they have like English degrees and work in product development and make makeup products and just think it's bronzer and slap the word contour on it. It's not bronze is literally what that sounds like. Bronze, sun, uh, suntan, warmth, warm, sun-kissed skin. Contour is shadow, shade, darker tone in that family, but it is cool tone because it's creating a shadow. How many, I can't even tell you how many times people tried to re redefine what contour was. Mm-hmm. Do you remember the Marc Jacobs campaign? They tried to say that you could contour with blush and it was called draping. Oh my God. And I was like, well, no. No. And do you remember that being a hot thing for like in like 2015, 2016, people were contouring with blush? Yeah. Fully. I, I didn't wear blush until two years ago, so I skipped that trend. I hated blush. I don't know why. I just thought it, I was of that era. It was the Kardashian era. Everyone just wanted to be <gasps> You brown. know what, though? I can't even hate on you because when I first started at Sephora, I didn't wear blush for the longest time because I was like, I'm already a pink. I am Patrick Starr, SpongeBob realness exactly. over here. I am pink. That's I what, don't need more blush. Agreed. I was always like, oh, my skin's so red. I don't need I any I want to take whatever. it out and look sculpted and like, yeah, highlighted. Yeah, so we just want to be chiseled, but like yeah. a brown, tan, chiseled. Yeah. Like, like yeah, you yeah, have mess. Yeah. So that is the difference, girl. And if if anything is labeled contour and it is warm even even if it's a contour on someone else that's the thing some contours can be cool tone but if it's too dark for you or meant for a different skin tone it can pull warmer on you so mm. it's about finding the right one and i always found believe it or not it was kind of funny because they only had two shades but the one of the best um cool tone like if you're super super fair like i'm talking white and uh can't find a contour light enough oh. i oh, love yeah. the flower beauty oh yeah flower beauty bronzers they had a bronzer and that they call them both bronzers even though they're not i think but anyway when you look at these two it's so clear which is the warm and the cool because the warm is horrible it's like orange but the other one is like cool tone but it has a sheen almost like uh, hourglass ambient lighting effect to it as it is. Oh. And I use that on every person that was like super fair. Inter- I thought you were going to say the essence. That's the great. Duos are the essence duo beautiful. contour is amazing. And even like, but even so when you go, so when you look at something and you're unsure if it's cool or warm, I always told people to, uh, I always show people the tissue test. So I always have like creams that I'm like, if you claim something is going to be warm to see like the real undertone in something, I always <gasps> took a cream, blended it out of my hand a little bit, took a tissue and put it on top, lift it. And you're going to see if it pulls orange or if it oh, pulls what undertone Because you're putting it. it on white. Because you're putting it on white. So then the true undertone comes out of a product. Wow. You'll see. And you'll see the deeper you go, look for the, look at a color wheel. Yes. So color wheel. So the deeper you go, like sometimes like the Fenty. Mm-hmm. Oh. She knows how to do a contour. Of course. The, deeper, the deepest contour, when you see it and when you 
when you blot it, it almost has like a tinge of like a purple. Yes. And like a deep plum. That's what you want. You want those cool tone colors in your contour. Yeah. But when you do it and you see warmth, it's a bronzer. It's not, yeah. It's a bronzer. It's going to darken your skin. Blend it's it out on your hand and sculpt. do a tissue test and you'll see, like rub it a little bit and you'll pull it. And that's, I always do that test, especially for lipsticks. If you tell me it's a cool tone nude, I blend that lipstick right out, put a tissue. And when it's bright peach, I'm like, oh, wow, Eat that's it. so smart. Eat especially it. for lip colors to oh, see the undertone. Yeah, to see the yeah. undertone. That's how I always, and when I'm shopping in a store, I'll always like blend them out. And then just press them and then wow. lift it. So it's a sheer layer and you see what color it really is. Wow. That's mm-hmm. great advice. Yeah. Next so up is, next? is under eye concealing is not about coverage. It's about correction. Wow. Yeah. And I was always, I was definitely guilty of this. And remember, oh God. 2016. The, the triangle of light. Yes. Remember that? when Piling your that concealer on. Can, down to here, up to here, and then filling in that triangle. I know. I have memories so burned much of the concealer. Too Faced concealer. Just like so much concealer. I know. You literally now, and I mean, we've seen it in recent years because of TikTok now, where they do the concealer trend in here and out yes. here. You don't need that much concealer. I know. And that's that's the level of concealer that you do need when you color correct. And uh, Mina, right? Yes. What's her name that does the color correcting? She. When it's down to a science when you yes. have the right tone of color corrector. Cause I see people all the time. They're like, Oh, I'm trying to color correct like a bruise on my leg and I'm trying to like cover it up. Yes. You have to know the color wheel and color theory to color yes. correct. So if you are not sure it's trial and error, you yes. have to find the right tone, the right product elf. Again, we've talked about them a hundred times. They mm-hmm. make great shades. You have to color correct, but you're not using color corrector all over your under eye. No, you are taking where you have discoloration. Yes. Patting it through. It might trick too for color correcting to use less concealer over it. Take a small amount of like an HD setting powder from like the kind of like the NYX or the elf. Yes. Pressing that over color corrector and then concealing over it mm-hmm. because you're not, if you use that liquid and then you're going to color cor- or conceal concealer. over it, it's, it's too much mix. liquid on liquid. And then your concealer looks peach. Yes. If you powder over it, it gives it that almost skin like dry layer again. And a then very you, little bit. And, yes. Oh, of I'm a talking, finely milled powder. I'm talking like minimal. Like yes. you barely want to like roll it on top. Yes. Minimal. You don't even, you shouldn't have to dust it. Yes. Concealer over that. Yes. Perfectly concealed skin. Totally. When which when it comes to color corrector, you mentioned the color wheel. Just Google the color wheel. Anything. It's the same with hair care. Like that's why blondes have purple shampoo because you anything across from one another on a color wheel is going to cancel each other out. So yeah. if you have blonde hair that has y- unwanted yellow tones across from that is drum roll purple Mm -hmm. and then blue is orange Mm -hmm. so that's the thing look at the darkness under your eye and say okay is this leaning more purple is it leaning more blue or is it leaning green and across from green is red which is why color correctors are red orange and yellow so it's about first the tone and then it's about the depth so a color corrector if like kevin and i we wouldn't be using a dark orange color corrector because we're too pale so then dial that down we would be using a peach so it's about understanding those two elements the undertone and the uh depth the shade and agreed i using a dot a dot of a color corrector putting that over like right here i have here and here very blue veins like So that's where I will do a little bit of like a orangey peach, dot it, like two dots, blend that out, and then go in with my concealer, and you have to use one-tenth of the concealer. And this is a huge benefit for people with mature skin because you're not piling on a ton of concealer. Right, and you don't need to. And I always told people You could even do a color corrector and then a powder foundation. Yeah, exactly, because you don't need to. And also, too, it always bugged me out, too, when people uh, that were more mature wanted concealer. You don't need to conceal sometimes from corner to outside and go all over. If you just need to conceal in here and everything out here is pretty even, yes. I always concealed people and then took a very finely milled, like sometimes like a, a foundation powder that was like a little like yeah. a loose texture, shake that off and press it underneath and even everything else out so it was one cohesive color. Mm-hmm. And they were like, oh my God, you barely did concealer out here. I was like, I didn't even do concealer. Exactly. You don't have to. You conceal what you need to yes. and leave it alone. Leave yes. the rest alone. Because that's the thing when you see all these people online doing 
the concealer here and then dotting it on the cheekbone here. The concealer on the cheekbone here, unless someone's very dark, which 99% of the people doing this technique are not, that is more of a sculpting technique. They're highlighting the brow right. bone to give lift. They're not using that to cover anything. So don't right, think that people don't have darkness going all the way out here typically when they're doing that technique. Like you're yes, saying, they're yes. not doing that to color correct. They're doing no, that to lift. To lift. So yeah. that's where on a lot of uh, women with mature skin, I would do concealer, just a dot in here, blend that out. Agreed. Set and bring the foundation up where they needed it, barely. Set everything. And then I would take a foundation powder that was a little lighter or a brightening powder. And then I would sculpt, I or I would, I should say, I would highlight that area where mm. you would use that concealer for that technique. Like a matte version exactly. of that. Exactly. Because the powder is not going to crease the way lifting. a liquid will. Yeah. But if you put liquid in that, it's going to crease. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Taking almost like a flat sponge, I would yes. always do that. And like, I'm talking quickly yes. i would dab a little bit and then immediately, immediately swipe it away, away and it would just like immediately lift that eye all right what's next girl so oh is this the last one yes oh oh no oh, the no, last, not the last one. one oh you boo yeah i'm not oh. ready baby voices make me sick oh my god i know so we have the, using the right tools yes so Again, it kind of goes back to the thing if you this are is such a big conversation there's so much and i'm about to say something very controversial in this segment. Yeah. Um, going now, we're going to talk about beauty blenders and sponges versus brushes. Everything. I hate beauty blender. <gasps> Girl, you're going to get red. People I, are going to come for your neck. I have. I, I no. I have always. I learned with brushes. Mm -hmm. I taught myself how to create something very artistic with all brushes. No sponges. Okay. Now, there are a lot of techniques that I've never tried with a sponge that I will probably at some point try, and I maybe I'll enjoy yeah. it. Yes. I'm talking using a beauty blender solely as your foundation application and concealer yeah. application and everything liquid with this. I'm not a fan. I think it uses too much product. Mm -hmm. I think it doesn't do anything for texture. Yeah. I don't think it makes anything look any smoother. Using a beauty blender after setting spray, like you and Allie Glines did it. Yes, I yes, think yes. that is very, very cool where she even said it makes her makeup last longer. And I'm like, I think that's fierce and I want to yeah. try that. I've never yeah. tried it. Fine. Yeah. I think it's a waste. Yeah. It's a complete waste of product for me. Yeah. I one day tried it where I did foundation. I did one and a half pumps to do one like full face. The next day I did my foundation with a beauty blender. Yeah. I used four pumps to get the same. Yeah. Coverage. Yeah. That's four. the thing. That's undeniable. Are you kidding me? A beauty blender is going to suck up your product a lot more. So you're going to go if through it a lot quicker. Do you know a lot of people don't know that you have to make them damp? Girl. I know. People with a dry beauty blender. Wait, and then like wiping it on their I face. I know, I know. No, and like no shade. Like, I mean, Yeah, do like, what you gotta if, do. We're just But if like people don't know that, but I'm like, okay, but this is why I think I they're overrated product. I get it as like maybe like a finishing step if you want to go over and like melt everything together. It's almost a way for me, a beauty blender is a way to like, when I'm almost done, like even when I tight line after my concealer's done, like mm -hmm. let's say I'm putting, uh, or not tight line, I'm sorry. I put uh, eyeliner in my waterline. My okay. waterline, I use the beauty blender to go like this, opposed to using my finger because I don't as want my a, finger as an assist. It's almost a way to touch my tool. face without messing up my face. Well, it's like taking like a powder puff and doing it too. Exactly. So I, I don't, I don't. And, and this is my thing with beauty blenders because it was so funny. I was so diehard beauty blender, and I never understood oh, because yes, you were. I was because every time I used a brush. I felt like it accentuated my texture. It made me look. It just what. But then I realized. It was because I wasn't exfoliating. I wasn't prepping my skin. So it was when you're not prepping your skin and you have dry skin or you have a buildup of dead skin, when you go in with a brush, it's aggravating that texture. But if your skin is smooth and you've exfoliated your skin and you prepped your skin properly, I agree with you in the sense that a brush to me, nothing looks smoother and more beautiful because a brush gets everything just exactly how much you need. It's not getting absorbed into the bristles. A good brush. It's mm. really getting it into the skin where a beauty blender, it's just sitting on top of the skin. It's not, it's not like becoming one with the skin. Yes. And you have to, again, this goes back to the way a brush is crafted. I can, yes. I, I don't know what it is. It's almost like this sick, like weird sick sense that I can look at a brush and be like, yes or no, if it's really? going to work for me. And I can look at a brush and no, I can look at a brush and I'll have something like, oh, I'm like, oh, like the 47 from Sephora. 
the day that brush came out and they redid it, I was like, I want to use that as a concealer brush. I saw it and I was like, I want to mm. put that under my eye. And that's the only thing. What I is it about it that makes you say that? Because it's like, a, what are the qualities? I so the say. qualities of a brush, typically it's the way it's going to fit where I know it's going to fit. Mm. And it it's labeled as a foundation brush, but I'm like the way it's, carved up yes. I said that can fit in under the eye and I'm like I could press in concealer and get full coverage I know or when I see a domed like sculpted brush yes. I'm like, that can set powder I can use that around the nose I can contour the nose with that brush yeah there's or even our about, Holy Grail Ulta collection number that's, 12 oh that's I the even 47. love that for concealer because that's it just that's, goes that's oh, the 47 the dupe. Okay, yes. it's the dupe. Yes, so that's does. 100% that brush where it's like that's you so see something, but it's also too, brushes can have the same shape, but not the same performance. Because so then that. it comes down to density, especially when it's liquid the brushes. The fiber of the brush. Girl, if it, she is not densely packed enough. Gr- She's it's, flippy floppy oh, and all over the place. Yes, it better, <gasps> it better bounce back. Okay, I'm about to say something. I'm about to say something that really gets under my skin Yeah, with blending brushes for eyeshadow. Okay. Because here's my thing, and this is where I think it gets so misconstrued where brushes are not made equal. Mm-hmm. If you give me a dome blending brush, right? Yeah. And if it's synthetic, and I'm going to try and explain this the best way I can. Yeah. If I touch a blending brush and it's synthetic, and when yeah. it moves like this too much, right? Okay. It's doing this. Yes. That is not doing... Jack shit for totally. your eyeshadow. Yes. When you take a natural hair brush and everything, and you're doing this, and the br- the bristles are kind of like, almost like grass in the wind, and they're mm. moving. I don't know what it, and they're moving. I know what you're saying. So together, it's opposed to, if, like, if the brush hair is too stiff, and it's, doing, it's, gonna, it's literally doing, they're not going to bend. It's where doing this. If they're softer, and they kind of do the do the wave, yes. the, that means it's a, you're gonna it's get a that smoother brush. Seamless blend totally, out of your shadow. The, if the bristles aren't smooth enough that they're just going like this, Yes. That means you might as well be blending with a broom. Because one hundred percent, you're just pushing dirt around. Girl. It needs to, yeah, totally. It it like almost flicks the dirt, right? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like catapults it. Yeah, opposed to a sm- the, they need something to be that's soft. gonna, yeah, it's gonna just, yeah, gracefully move together rather than something where like the outside hairs are kind of moving around, but the inside, you'll see that the tip just moves around. And yeah. I showed that to my friend the other day. We were like. He cleans my brushes and I was explaining to him and he was like, oh, no, that kind of makes sense. And I was like, yeah, like I almost want to throw these away because they're they're useless. They're garbage. That Well, that brings us to the end of this segment. And I just have to say we are psychopaths. Like you, it just I'm sitting here laughing, thinking about how much we've <laughs> analyzed makeup and beauty that we are literally critiquing the wave we're sitting here going like, I'm like this the grass in the, the wind wave <laughs> of a brush hair but that's what i mean man it's just there's so much that goes into it and it's and we're art just myth yeah busting uh, we're just busting the myth oh uh, busting uh, the myth we'll Ooh. be right back after this oh we'll be right back oh <laughs> Well, that is it for another episode of Beautiful and Bother. That was a... So we wanted to talk about other things, but like I said, we could talk the way we analyze things. I knew that things. was going to happen, too. Oh, my God. Thank God I set a timer because I was like, oh, okay, well, that was an hour. That so. would have been an hour, 45-minute podcast. And you would have thought me. Yeah. I was like, oh, that was 20 minutes. And But here we are going, if the bristles don't... <laughs> don't if don't, the bristles don't, don't, don't act like wheatgrass... <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Oh my God. Like psychopath. So we figured it was going to be a whole juicy thing. So yeah, sadly, this is the end of this week's episode, but tune in next week for a brand new episode. Make sure to subscribe on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, leave us a little five-star review wherever you guys are. I hope you are happy, safe, and healthy. And remember, you are beautiful. Bye guys. Bye. 